every day. Everything we see is matter. Whether it's the ground we walk on, the air we jump through, or the water we swim in. Everything is matter. But have you ever heard of antimatter? In 1928, the English theoretical physicist Paul Dirac combined Einstein's special theory of relativity with quantum mechanics and came upon the Dirac equation. This equation characterizes the spin half of massive particles. However, this equation provided two solutions, one for a particle and one for a mirror image of that particle with an opposite charge, something we now call an antiparticle. To better understand this, we can take the equation x squared 4. Here, x could be equal to 2, but x could also be equal to minus 2. The same goes for the Dirac equation. If you add up 2 and minus 2, you'll get 0. If matter and antimatter were to meet, they would annihilate each other, forming a blast of energy. This was all just a theory, but in 1932, Paul D. Anderson actually saw the anti-electron with his own eyes, and named it the positron. This proved Dirac's theory, and meant that for every particle in our universe, there must be an antiparticle. But that leads to another question. Where is all the antimatter? Over the years, a lot of theories were made, including whole different antimatter universes. But the most common is the matter-antimatter asymmetry. For a very long time, physicists have thought that no matter what or where we do something, the results under the same circumstances will always be equal. This is called symmetry. However, they discovered that of the four fundamental forces, the weak nuclear force doesn't always obey this rule. In fact, it gives an extremely small preference to matter over antimatter. This was discovered in CP violations, where C stands for charge conjugation, which basically means you change the charge of a particle, and P stands for parity, which means you make the particle behave like a mirror image of itself, turning matter into antimatter, and antimatter into matter. For instance, the potassium-40 in this banana decays, and every 75 minutes forms a positron, which is the antiparticle of an electron. So what this all basically means is that because of violations in the C and the P symmetry, the Big Bang created a billion antimatter particles, and the billion and one matter particles, and that may be the reason we're here. Thanks for watching.